For ten days, the giant city auditorium in Minneapolis, Minnesota, is the center of world Lutheranism. Representatives of more than 50 million members of the Lutheran World Federation are demonstrating a glowing testimony to their concern for the entire community and world. Delegates from throughout the entire Christian world join together at this third assembly of the Federation to give a unity of faith and ideas which will help guide the lives and thoughts of man in today's world. Bishop Lilia, who is president of the Federation and is alive today only because Allied forces prevented his execution by the Nazis, was to give the formal speech starting the Third Assembly of the Lutheran World Federation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lutheran World Federation to open officially the exhibits of this assembly. So Bishop Lilia turns. I solemnly declare these scissors. exhibits snips the ribbon. Open. Has sealed off the exhibit hall. And the rather large crowd begins to file through with the opening, thus marking an end to this brief proceeding. Our people who think that a, an assembly of this nature might be far too much along the line of promotion in the technical sense and statistics. But when we organized this worldwide meeting of Lutherans, we were led by the conviction that we have to meet worldwide problems on a worldwide basis. And it is our help, our hope, that this assembly may help to organize and unite the thoughts of Christians all over the world in order to better equip them to meet all the threatening problems of our days in the spirit of faith and Christian love. This is surely a most impressive occasion, and it's my very real pleasure and privilege to have this opportunity to welcome you here. I would like to do so in three different respects. Firstly, as the Chief Executive of the State of Minnesota, on behalf of all of our people, we want you to know that we are honored that this great assembly is gathered in our state that we hope that you will enjoy your visit with us. We are proud of the state of Minnesota as you are of your states and your country. I want to ask you all to give thanks to Jesus for his gift and of unity which he has bestowed upon us through faith in him so that though we may never have met before, though we may be living under entirely different earthly circumstances, we are nevertheless friends and brothers as members of one body the Universal Church of Christ.
the Norwegian Church, Church of Hungary, Love, however, demands not only that we care for those who are used to a certain tradition. It demands also that we regard those who have not grown up in any church tradition at all. This glorious life together will not be restricted geographically, nor racially, nor socially. There will be neither Jew nor Greek, neither East nor West. All will be free because all will be one in Christ. Thank you. There are women delegates to the Lutheran World Federation, too, from all over the world. I haven't any glamour to my appearance from Chicago, Illinois, but Miss Rajas Wari from India. Where are you from, Miss Rajas? I'm from Madras, India. Madras, India. And Miss Nihambing? I am from Indonesia. Mrs. Nihambing and Miss Rajas Wari. This is the first time that they've had an experience with TV in their own country. We have never seen t television in our country. Never seen it, have you? No. And now they are a part of it. Now, we know that you come from different kind of homes than we have in this country. Do our houses look like your houses? No. We, uh, we very rarely have these stories. So many... Uh, you are all on one floor. One floor. Well, oh, now yeah. that would compare to our ranch type home, wouldn't it? <laughs> How about you, Mrs. Uh, uh, Sihambi? Do you have ho many rooms in your home? Well, we don't have many rooms. And now that we are at this great assembly, what are your feelings, Miss Rajeshwari? Oh, I feel very grateful. I feel very grateful because the Lutheran women have made it possible for me and 11 others, I think, to come to this assembly. Yes, we're very happy that the Lutheran women could bring these many women to the Lutheran World Federation. Can you uh, tell us about one thing, perhaps, that you enjoyed very much this far, thus far? The opening message, I liked it very much when he said that only Christ can free and no other, and only Christ can unite and no other. Mm -hmm. Yes, the fellowship and the inspiration of such a worldwide group is certainly a real experience. 
but soon it will be over, and then we must go home. Mr. Siambing, you told me that you came by the way of Europe from uh, your great country of Indonesia. Now, how will you return? Well, I go from uh, San Francisco by plane, first to Honolulu, and then to my country in Sumatra. You have gone all around the world when you returned to your home of Indonesia and traveled by air in the company of your husband, who is a church leader from your own country. Isn't that interesting? And now, how about you? I'm not going back. I'm going to stay in this country for one year for study at the University of Pennsylvania. And then you will be more American, perhaps, than Indian. <laughs> I may be. <laughs> But we do expect certain great things coming out, as the very heading, the theme of this conference indicates, Christ frees and unites. You will remember yesterday my country of India celebrated the 10th anniversary of her independence. We are youth from uh, all over the world. I am Paul Benson from the United States, Des Moines, Iowa. And I'd like to introduce to you, and Anita, would you tell us your name? I'm Anita Deal from Sweden. Anita Deal from Sweden. And Brigitte? I am Brigitte Rosland from Germany. From Germany. What part of Germany are you from, Brigitte? I am from West Germany. I'm living near Hanover. Near Hanover. You know, Hanover is a big name here at this convention, isn't Bishop William from Hanover? Oh, yes. Bishop Lee is uh, the bishop of our synod. The bishop of your synod and the president of the Lutheran World Federation, yes. Yes. Uh, how long have you been in the United States? Well, Brigetta, how long have you been uh, in uh, Minneapolis now? Oh, about one week. About one week. And what's your impression of this city where we're holding our Lutheran World Federation assembly? I think it's a real nice and beautiful city, but... Uh, it's too, too big for me. Too big? Well, yeah. I thought uh, the German cities were quite large, too. We have many big cities, too, but you see, I like your country. I like more. You like our country. I think uh, we'll all pick that up and say we all do, yes. I wonder, Anita, 
Uh, you have been here how long now? Since the 19th of June. And what have you been doing in that time? Oh, I've been traveling up and down the whole of America almost. Within the Missouri Synod. Within, I see that's one of our Lutheran churches, church mm -hmm. bodies here in the United States. Now, where have you been? Could you name some of the places? Uh, North Carolina, Alabama, New Orleans, southern Illinois, Chicago, South Dakota. My, down south, all the way to the northern border. Why don't you give us a quick rundown of where you've been? I have been the most of the time in Minnesota, the northern district, and one week in Montana to the International Youth Convention of the ERC. Regatta, this is the first time that uh, the Lutheran World Federation Assembly has met in the United States. And why are the youth attending this convention? I think the youth is attending this convention because we want to be a part of the Lutheran world, uh, the Lutherans of the world. That's right. Uh, probably the future leaders of our Church of Tomorrow, is that right? Yes, I think so. Very good. It's yes. Anita, we have just come from a camp at Onemia, Minnesota, and there were 130 youth from around the world there. Now, what was the purpose of this camp? To bring us young people together, we were to share our experiences in youth work, which are, is our main task. And I think the thing we learned most of all is that we can help one another. We have two other youth that I would like for you to meet from around the world, and this time we slipped below the equator. Uh, where are you from? I am from Tanganyika, East Africa. And your name? My name is Tuntemeke Meshat Godfrey Sanga, in short, TMG Sanga. TMG, well here in America that's much like TNT. Did everyone, anyone ever call you that? No, 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 they were short enough to call me Sanga. Sanga, okay, I'll call you Sanga, good? Fine. Very fine. fine. And Australia, what is your name? I'm Raymond Kotzer from Deananda. Ray, uh, as representative of your Lutheran Church in Australia, what is your purpose here? Well, my prime purpose here is to study the youth activities of the, in the Lutheran Church here in America as well as as much as possible of overseas countries and to, to take these ideas back and implement them if possible in the church at home. I heard uh, someone in one of the programs refer to the Orphan Churches of Africa and Sangha, I wonder why they use that term. Well, at the end of the Second World War, the German missionaries had to go back, and the Lutheran churches from uh, United States, as well as in Europe, had to take up the work, and they started working in Tanganyika. That's why they refer to open churches. I see. Well, we certainly uh, have learned something about our Lutheran church around the world, and we thank you for uh, taking part in this so that some of the people from throughout America might know more of what we are doing here at the Lutheran World Federation Assembly in Minneapolis, the first time it has been held in the United States. Surely the word of the church must be in support of extending the areas of freedom. In some cases, this may mean the establishment and promotion of programs which will prepare a people for the exercise of the rights and responsibilities of civil liberty. May I say that above all, we Americans need help from our brethren abroad to assist us in learning how to transform prosperity into prosperity, and thus fulfill God's purpose in our situation. Be patient with us, for it is not a simple nor an easy matter. God has already blessed us through you more than you know.
Our desire is to engage in sincere and earnest common study, allowing the minds of men of all our churches to touch and their thoughts to penetrate with the minds and thoughts of other men of other churches so that we come close to consensus on the great issues before the assembly, the issues of the nature of freedom and unity. What we have done in study at Minneapolis is consciously designed to be only the beginning of a wide process of study that will continue over the next several years. The Lutheran children of the world proclaim that Christ frees the children of the world for a new life. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold...
I pull a ferret through. I do not consider myself bolder than other people. But it is a fact that at one important hour of my life, I had to face the possibility of immediate death. My Lord helped me. Therefore, I did not despair. No, I was not even afraid. I also have a life which was given to me once, as it is given once to other people. I would like to tell you very humbly, even now, I am not afraid of death. Now, I would like to pray for each of you with my whole heart that you will be given and will cherish this gift of God, real freedom in a life which is subordinated to his good and holy will. And now bow your heads and hearts to receive the blessing of the almighty and triune God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>